So what noise does that? Hello? The hello? Oh crap. Yeah, phones. You ever do that? The internet's got a strange intrigue with taking life's mundanities and making a game out of them. Work in a car wash business, playing with rubber ducks, taking the night shift, scrubbing away the sin as part of a cleanup crew, hell, job simulator. There's a certain novelty to the practice. How do we take doing you know, I don't know, nothing, and saturate that concept with some weirdly crazy engaging mechanics. I mean, there's an audience out there for it, right? Some of the most innovative indie games of the past decades are basically exactly that. No, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Sometimes even just mechanically, well, it just makes sense to take the tedious and cook it into something new. Working at Amazon? <laughs> nah. I'll engage in a glorified fetch quest if there's a chance I get a visit from the rake. Like, come on, talk real benefits here. But there are ways to pull off a uniquely unsettling atmosphere in a setting like this without the extravagance of deadly alien life, the viscera of a horror movie mess, or again, I don't know what you're talking about, haunted robots, and that's by tapping into the horrors close to home. Home Safety Hotline, released on January 16th, 2024 by Night Signal Entertainment, consisting of dev team duo Nick Lives and David Johnson, is exactly what it sounds like, catapulting you into the role of a call center operator to deal with customers I know, concerned about a recent relatable homeowner issue they've been having. Hey, my faucet's leaking. Uh, well, sir, you may have a frozen pipe or a gateway to hell. This game sort of just materialized into my life after a tip that a tweet was looking for early access for viewers. And hey, a spunky steam key lighter. Well, this has never happened before. It's baby's first clout and a cleverly integrated way to comply with the law and disclaim that I received this game for free. Yeah, I'll mention it later, don't worry. And for a game I really didn't have a lot of background for, Night Signal Entertainment? They've dabbled in some analog horror, maybe that's where I know I'm from? Eh, yeah, might be a red herring, none of their video catalog extends beyond the three month mark. And uh oh, genuine creativity alert! It's early January 2024, Mickey's fresh out his shackles, it's been nothing but this. The Vanishing of SS Willy's not only a good example of analog horror, but one of what an entertainingly twisted take on what a spooky Steamboat Willy parody could be. Thank you, Night Signal. I mean, Night Signal Entertainment? Wait, Night Signal. Night Signal! I, I loved that game. It's an abstract indie horror flick released by the same dudes back in 23. And if there's anything I've picked up that excels at crafting the right kind of anxiety in a confined space that isn't this, while adhering to some kind of analog broadcast vibe, yeah. It's Night Signal, so hell yeah, seeing anything else from these guys can't be a bad thing. A home hazard call center dressed in late 90s attire that draws influence from analog horror, like a mole smoking crack cocaine, it's not what I'd usually go for, but I'm happy to go in blind. And, you know, if I figure out of anyone dealing with home safety issues, I'm somebody with worth it. Excuse me. Oh, it's sort of up. Experience, so thank you, Gamotion Dog. I've constructed an interdimensional intercanon communications device helping anyone and everyone with similar bullshit going on. Hi, hello. Hey, is your running? Yeah, it's in Puerto Rico. Yours isn't. Shit. Ugh. Whatever, man. We're here pretty instantly with that warm home video vibe plus nightmare before a title screen that pretty confidently tells us this is all you gotta worry about for now, and I like that attitude. This logo, by the way, is fashionably 90s. I couldn't imagine this as a spinning gif on a bit crushed website more. And hey, booting up, and yeah, the lo fi interface, that boot like bliss backdrop, it's the year 1996, perfectly capturing the essence of a 2005 computer lab. So yeah, I know my way around MS Paint, I'm good. The palette of customization crammed into this thing is massively appreciated too, with a slew of accessibility options that even if I never touch, some people gotta, which is pretty sexy awesome that that exists, I think. You can get real specific with scan lines, themes, CRT screen resolution. I settled on something a little lower res just for that extra fuzz. It's my first day and I'm not screwing up because my aesthetic choices are making me squint. Hi, bitch. You have beryllium? Wait. <laughs> I couldn't see! Presentation-wise, and basically doubling as the game's menu, the desktop here also serves as a decent intro to the main gameplay loop, which will typically go something like this. A customer will call in about some kind of disturbance, issue, or other hazard they've witnessed. He'll interpret their often vague explanations by sifting through and picking out any key information from the conversation to narrow down what the hazard actually is from a list of potential matches on your left. And finally, blindly sent over an informational package explaining how to deal with it, praying you are right with sometimes certain death on the line. Sean Residence. Yeah, hi. I think we're experiencing a house. 
house fire. Our possessions are melting. The wallpaper is peeling off. I think a small made family cooking upstairs. When yeah, I'm explaining something real important. Hold that thought. Each entry will vary in detail, but it'll always be just enough to match any real identifying information stored in a caller transcript, complete with a visual and a general description, danger, and solution. And also the occasional audio sample to spice things up, I guess. The name of the game is here to provide quality customer service, with the less people you're able to accurately help not only taking a toll on your conscience, but your accuracy rate, on which you'll 100% be judged for by the company and by your supervisor, Carol. This is Carol. She's goddamn insane. She's the one who'll introduce you to all this. She'll oversee your end of day results and grant you a tad more access to additional household hazard information each time you return. Keep that shit to yourself, though. It's confidential. We wouldn't want to give the wrong people life-saving advice now, would we? What do they ever do for us? With more and more potential dangers, though, comes more and more reading comprehension. Anybody with a piss-poor memory below a fifth grade literacy level stay the goddamn hell away from this thing. Especially when the Enchiridion you're given adds more and more hazards and creatures every day. A progressive difficulty increase, if you will. The potential dangers you're required to take note of getting weirder, more perplexing, and more dangerous. And hey, it got to a point real fast where I ended up whipping out a notepad. It was actually a TXT file, but it was a notepad I found myself literally writing and comparing notes in. I don't know if that's bad game design. I don't know if you're meant to, but hey, if it helps my stupid white ass, it'll help you too. There's a little more to do on the menu, by the way, but we'll get back to that in a tad. I, listen, I'm already a customer down. I am on fire. Oh, I'm muted, right? Wait, 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 they're dead. With gameplay as simple as this, though, like the state of child labor in the late 1800s, this is the 90s, a little breakage is inevitable. Nothing too intrusive, but enough to shake things up in a pretty realistic way. Notably, internet outages inhibiting your ability to access data files while on hold. And the occasional, what is your goddamn problem? The network going down is kind of genius, the whole point of the game being to absorb as much info as possible, so cutting you off from that lifeline temporarily is the perfect way to gatekeep and genuinely keep you sharp and on your toes. The prank calls can suck my slink. Yeah, they're a little unsettling when you don't know what flavor of the day it is yet, but then they just get real weird. Say pepper squeeze and I'm stabbing you. Oh, I really don't think this is a prank, buddy. Uh, I'm calling about my car. It's making a grinding noise whenever I shift into reverse. Oh, so what? Call a mechanic. I did! What happened? Ah, uh, I, I believe a seven foot tall void creature stripped her of her bones and just ate her. Oh, sorry, I know a different guy. You want his number? Sure, uh, absolutely. I'll MSN you. Cheers. Well, functionally, things are surprisingly entertaining for a gameplay loop stripped from such an otherwise mundane concept, and they really are. It's not afraid to duck back into its roots as an analog horror riffing flick and pull out tiny pieces of environmental storytelling through the trickle down of new entries and callers to accumulate a very tense kind of creep factor, like something's going wrong across the board, but you don't know what. Things start getting real, and you start to encounter a lot of Really upset customers, hilariously turned away by actual doctors and the cops due to the severity levels. And it gets bad. <laughs> Though even through people's austerity, you're still expected to do your job, sucker. Me as a young mom whose kid's gone missing in the middle of the night, the only decipherable context clues through those <laughs> inconvenient tears, emphasize May checking her kid's messy closet for bees at the insistence of said kid's fear of said bees. Okay, well, bees is an option, and I guess you could hide SCP-106 McGee in a messy closet. Hell, there's an Amber Alert recording on the desktop you can access before work. More than that in a tad. Lane down a similar abduction case, but that report described the suspect wearing a bush or something, so wait, wait, a, a false rose bush. It, it's a bush with legs. Kid's scared of bees, so he's got to be outside a lot, but hold it. Bees in the closet, right? It, and the kid wasn't even outside. But bees in his closet? Why would he be hearing bees in his... No. Buzzing. This kid's hearing buzzing from his closet, assuming there are bees and associating those anxieties together when he's actually hearing the buzzing given off by a false object that'd be hidden in plain sight in a messy closet, trapping its victim inside itself and digesting them over several years. Lady, your kid's in purgatory. Hell yeah! That's the payoff that makes this game so freaking engaging. You'll be stuck in a cooler for ages. Hell, I never even got half the original answers right in my first playthrough. My second 
100% accuracy for each main day, and every single one I solved hit me exactly like that. Sometimes not only was it easy to identify the issue, but also satisfyingly evil. This poor dick refused orders to keep a common hobbit bay to prevent it from metamorphosizing into a Hello? You're right, I'm feeling pretty confident in my odds laying on me. The kid's eyes rolled backwards, a bunch of birds flew out of his mouth. Now his tongue's a muscular flesh creature, dragging him everywhere and leaving toxic residues on the ground. I think it's burning the carpet. Oh, that's a premature house fire? Chug a glass of water? You'll be immune. Yellow. I meant my kid, you moron! Oh, your family's dead. You got the sniffer. Bye! You should turn your and perk up, you depressed son of a bitch call center worker, a 90% accuracy rate or above rewards you with a store coupon of anything of specifically the company's choosing. They don't do anything, they're more of a fun novelty trinket you unlock that gets emailed to you than a reward, but what are you gonna refuse that silver medallion discount? In addition to company slop from corporate, you also get the intermittent ramblings of Mike. Three. That's his legal name. Quit before it's too late? Buddy, it was too late four days ago. Do I look like I can afford to walk out of here without a check? Though the real meat and potatoes here is the quaint collection of analog tape clippings that exist to aid in uncovering loosely threaded pieces of the underlying narrative, and some of them are unsettling. You'll get about as much out of these as any decent fan of analog horror would. But at first glance, this is a fever dream. Like, the iron swords, the smart mice, then hey, every time I boot up to look at one of these things, it's the background shifting. Then you realize, hey, aren't half the creatures you encounter subspecies of trolls, gnomes, sprites? Then one of the prank callers you get suddenly dies mid call, you never hear from any of them again, and it's possible an entire subset of humans were just wiped out. Then Carol starts giving us a pep talk in old goddamn English. Oh no, it's okay, guys. Somebody just opened up a portal to medieval Europe. There's something twisted to play here, and I think it's Satan. Hit me. There's a river of human remains in my home. Please send someone around the place. Yo, yeah, that's Satan. Or, uh, ants? They're anagrams. No, they're not. I don't think the dizzying amount of information presented to you across the span of this thing's on accident, either. Feeling this overwhelmed makes for a good incentive to want to learn as much as I can. Not just for those gratifying dopamine hits where I get to feel like a goddamn genius, but because you have to. It's almost pressuring in a way. Like, please sit here and revise the SCP wiki pop quiz on Sunday. And I get if that's a switch off for you. It legitimately took me two whole playthroughs to feel like I was able to really sink my fangs into the garbage at office, but like, just shut the fuck It was still a good time. I only got to improve on my past experience and hell. My only real complaint about the game at that point was that things were 100% scripted to my surprise and slight confusion. It's not a bad thing. I just didn't get to see anyone tortured by half the zany shit on here. Maybe some kind of randomization option in the future would be pretty sexy, just saying. Analog horror, home dangers, the two go hand in hand. It's a vehicle for a very personal kind of horror, often exhibiting monsters or entities living within the confines of your abode, so mashing up the aesthetics of the time period analog horror is most known for taking place in makes perfect sense as a video game concept. Old web aesthetic, analog horror, European folklore, none of these concepts concepts are particularly new or fresh on their own, but woven together into such a weirdly captivating gameplay loop, role-playing as a goddamn call center operator, and somehow turning that into an investigative SCP wiki browsing nightmare scenario haunted by the cries of the people you gotta be helping. It's low-key genius. I, I mean, a horror game like this totally switches things around. Suddenly, you're on the other side of the glass, coming face to face with the unassuming general public on the receiving end of the head-on danger. You, trapped behind the screen, stuck only indulging in their experiences, reactions, and that trickling essence of psychological horror that comes from that. That's not an easy feeling to invoke, and Home Safety Hotline kinda nails it. It's like I'm playing a Jerry Cherry video, digging through confidential info stored on a late 90s home PC and a particularly dank set piece. What a specifically niche vibe I didn't know I kinda love. It's a weak reason to dismiss any game, but while analog horror-esque projects aren't the kinda thing I usually kick with, the way the horrors here are presented and digested by the world around you is what matters here. It's the people around you going through this stupid shit on a personal level. And hey, you crazy bastard, you know what? Half the creatures here are passive, just annoying or, <laughs> you know, creepy as shit. But there's a common ground in all of them, regardless. The fact that they're all so otherworldly, all equally contributing to the idea of 
What next? What else could possibly be hazardous enough to warrant doctors, hell, the cops, to turn regular people away because they can't face whatever's lurking in the patient's shadow? Hi, hello. Hey, are you ready? I, oh, get get out of here, man! I. Go, go. You should help them. What? Oh my god, yay, Gamajan Dog. I could have died tonight. Home Safety Hotline, as of writing, this thing's a recent release, and I'm assuming part of the reason I was given a free key was to give this thing some air. So, I don't want to spoil the ending and where things lead up to, but instead use this video as a way to showcase what genuinely resonated with me with Night Signal Entertainment's latest bout and why you should give a shit. Uh, cause they give a shit. I accidentally pointed out a crucial flaw in the ending. Now I'm crucial fodder in this game's final build, bitch. Learning about each new entry is fun. The gameplay loop's satisfying and the empathy is harrowing. It's an experience that plays off your instinctive fears in an entirely unique way and one I seriously couldn't recommend enough. Like yeah, it's taught me that even in the most dire situations, nothing's gonna be as it seems. Come on, dog, are you a skinwalker? No. Auntie wants me to think the opposite. Reverse psychology can suck my dick. <laughs>